Hello everybody, how are you all doing tonight? Baby whales, mini dolphins, and tiny tiny little penguins. Are you guys ready to march? Because I totally am. So we're going to review yesterday and get this over with very quickly. And by the way guys, um, you know in my last video that I was making the joke about it reaching, um, what was I saying there? About, about me reaching 100,000 subscribers and followers total. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, right? The goal is to not make money off of you guys. I don't want to charge content. And I'm very honest about what I, my intentions are, right? It's to teach you guys in the community what I know and, and just do it all for free, right? Of course, I'm going to monetize my YouTube ads. It makes sense for me to do it because I'm not asking anything in return. And you know what? There's just an ad. Like, you know, if I'm on YouTube, I may as well do that. It just makes 100% sense, right? And I was also joking about how because I'm not making money off of you guys and I'm not going to be selling anything and I don't plan to. Everything will be free. I will just use my time when I can to help out the general public with questions and answers. Um, and I was joking about you guys sending me a dollar, right? And actually, a lot of people are sending me um, a dollar. In Ethereum, I would highly suggest you guys not do that. In Ethereum, if you are, are going to anyways, right, uh, don't send in Ethereum because um, it's actually costing me every time it goes to, um, because of the fees, right, there's a small deposit fee. So I noticed that I have like $100 in like negative USD because I don't keep everything in USD in exchange. I keep it in my funding, right? That's, that's what I do with the majority of my money. I keep it in funding because then I can let it grow over small over a period of time, right? But I'm noticing that because their people are sending a dollar in Ethereum, it's just converting it to a negative balance because of the fee that Bitfinex charges for a small account. So I was just completely joking, guys. Like, I'm entirely cool about it. But if you guys wanted to support me anyway, then just throw me a dollar or something since I made that ridiculous joke, you're welcome to. But I might recommend something like Ripple or, or maybe EOS or, or something like, um, like Litecoin and instead right or neil <clears throat> because it's a cheap alternative anyways we're not going to talk about that you guys just like uh, trust me guys like i'm always joking around always joking around i'm never serious and i've honestly um you know, i've made my living already just put it that way i'm really cool for money it's not my main goal otherwise i would just be trading full-time oh, that's, that's the truth right if i was chasing profits i would just be doing this full-time instead of making these videos as well and you know like the youtube it's it's not much to my standards right the steam it it's not much to my standards and it's just there as a subsidy because i'm doing it anyways already so why not right it's definitely not my primary source of income in any way whatsoever so i just wanted to clear that up very quickly and for all for all the new reviewers my 49 cent scenario is completely off the table now okay we're gonna try to get this video done in less than um 10 minutes if it's over 10 minutes you guys can actually bill me for one bitcoin and i'm serious about it the first five people that messages me if this video is over um 10 minutes you guys can bill me one bitcoin so i'm gonna keep this video very short and like i always say i'm gonna try to actually make it um i'm gonna try to make it exactly 10 minutes and one second just to see how many people are gonna try to bill me for it <laughs> <laughs> that would be so funny and um i entered a position you know i entered a position for I'm gonna be really honest about it as well because i see opportunity here so i entered a position for 9,000 ripple for my day trading position that i'll hold for i don't know till tomorrow or something like that right yeah so the, and i entered it because um it just makes sense guys and let's go over why. I wish I can get these videos out earlier. You know, that'd be amazing if I can get it out earlier. Let you guys get in my head as well with what I am doing. So let's talk about what is going on here with Ripple. So we have now have a clearly defined support. Now, my recommendations are a few things, right? I, I usually recommend um, to wait for a key breakout above critical resistance before you guys go ham with your position there. And I'm going to talk about why I recommend that, okay? So let's go over it. Major zone here, okay? I consider this waves one, two, three, four, and a five somewhere up or up over here, okay? I'm just putting my five right over here, but the five is actually the entire zone, this right here. Now we have a critical resistance breakout above 155, which is this point right here. If you guys, if we get higher than the uh, one, one, yeah, 155. When I say 155, I mean a dollar 15.5 there, okay? Um, then we're going to surge up to the next point over here, which is $1.22.7, okay? A dollar, sorry, you know what I mean. A, one, 
I'm just going to say 2276, that range, because we know it's in the dollar. There's no point of me being redundant, right? And then if we break out above 122 here, we're going to end up surging to these points over here, which is $1.32 to $1.35. Now, how am I getting this target? up here well first of all i'm taking my fibonacci extension of just the actual first wave right here okay of the first wave right here and we notice that the sec third wave it actually hit higher than the 161.8 so it's very rational to target somewhere be somewhere in between the two out like right above the 261.8 as well right so that makes a lot of sense on my end so yeah and then the next target for target five there the reason why we're choosing it or the next reason rather is because if I take my third wave extension from here to down over here it gets a one-to-one -one right up there so which also means that I'm choosing something slightly lower than wave five okay and that makes a lot of sense as well or sorry not wave five but slightly lower than one-to-one -one, which means that I'm assuming that wave three is the longest and not the shortest right and because I'm assuming that wave three is the longest and not the shortest, it makes a lot of sense for us to undershoot slightly more or slightly less than a one-to-one -one extension there. So I'm using this perfect gauge, right, between 261.8 of the first wave there and also a 100 extension of the third wave, which, which makes a lot of sense to me right now. And we see Ripple just bounce from the 161 region right there, right? And I got a few of my limit orders filled here. I tweeted it as well. I always tweet my positions. Like, I'm not shy about that at all. So I'm now $50 up, right? And now I'm going to talk about risk to reward scenario as well, because we always need to talk about risk to reward, okay? So you guys have to make sure that you understand risk to reward, okay? So we're going to go over... Um, where is my long position here? Mm, sorry, give me a sec, I'm just checking my messages. Mm, I'm going to call you right back, Maria. I know you're watching this video. Sorry, sweetheart. Okay, I'm going to target, obviously, the next resistance point just around here, right, for a day trading position. You know, we're talking like a 5% gain there, right? Day trading, I'll set my stop loss for about really tight, actually, like to 105, maybe. 104.5 so i look at this risk to reward ratio i'll probably end up targeting a higher one like right up there i look at this risk to reward ratio and i ask myself hey is it a good rr absolutely it is right super good risk to reward of 1.58 and this is why i'm entering it i'm not suggesting for you guys to enter it at all right my recommendation is clear my recommendation is very clear that i would recommend purchasing on a breakout because here it requires a lot of mental discipline it requires a lot of knowledge in terms of sticking to your stop loss being very strict very focused i always do not recommend playing this consolidation pattern ever i always recommend waiting for an actual breakout first okay an actual breakout is usually best in my opinion so make sure you guys are watching out for these key zones that i mentioned now if this somehow fails okay if that fails then we're just going to assume the next possible target which would be right in here and i'll be sure to provide you guys with all these charts and everything as well i promise you guys are going to see all of it no worries at all so this is my next support zone right right in here so there you go these are my thoughts this is the this is the if it fails right if failure occurs this is the next support zone between roughly what is the low there like 9618 about yeah right around here so yeah 9618 9618 to where right around the about one dollar range very psychological number the one dollar range right here okay so these are my quick thoughts, guys. Be sure to check out Steemit and my Twitter as well for all these charts. I post everything, guys. And you know what? Like, you guys are always going to get access to these charts. They're always going to be updated regularly as well. And you guys are going to make sure... I'm going to make sure that I always keep you guys up to date with my thoughts on the coins that I trade, which is basically Ripple, Litecoin. I'll be looking at Ethereum very soon and Bitcoin. Those are my three coins right now. And other than that, I hope you guys have a great night. It's now 9 minutes and 45 seconds. <clears throat> and I'm just going to chill here, guys, for another 9 seconds. 
right? I'm going to close this video at exactly 10 minutes and one second, okay? And then we're going to go from there, and you guys are all going to get a Bitcoin because I'm now perfectly